In today's video, I'm going to cover how I make these wave-like carvings in various materials. I'm going to first cover how I generate this 3D models, and then how I machine them, and do a couple different experiments in different materials. There are two reasons that I'm making this video. The first one is that I just finished my engineering degree, and I kind of wanted to do a fun little project without feeling guilty about having to spend my time on something else. And the second reason is I just got a brand new camera, the G9 Mark II, and I want to test out some of the slow motion features on it. My beloved original G9 unfortunately was damaged when I was doing a photo shoot in a club. The lasers from the club actually put some dead spots on the sensor. I think that it's kind of funny that my camera was actually destroyed doing something like that, instead of some of the homemade projects like welding or actually laser engraving that I do anyway. So this video is just for messing around, trying out some different 3D surfacing techniques on some different materials, and also testing out the new camera. I hope you enjoy. First off, I'm gonna show you how I generated some of these wave models. There's a cool website called Turtle Toy where people upload generative 2D art along with the code used to generate it. I was on here looking for something to do on my laser engraver, but I think people mostly use this for CNC pen plotters. But there's some really cool stuff on here, and I particularly liked the simplex noise wave generator made by Ryan Durr in 2020. This gave me an idea that maybe I could adapt this to making 3D models of waves for the CNC machine. Because the website shows you the JavaScript code that the people used to create the art, I was able to adapt it to work in Python on my computer to give me a bit more control. With a little bit of adaptation, I got it to generate grayscale height plots instead of wavy lines. Because the waves are generated mathematically, I can have a lot of control over how they look using a few different parameters. The main two parameters that affect the final wave pattern are the wrinkles and the frequency. Changing the frequency of the simplex noise kind of zooms the waves in and out, and changing the wrinkles adjusts how detailed each wave is. You can see that just by adjusting these two parameters, I can get quite a massive different range of waves. The 2D grayscale plots can be easily converted into a 3D surface, where it's a lot easier to see how it would look if I was to carve it out of a material. Once I have a 3D surface, I then have a few lines of code that export it as an STL mesh. Importing that into Fusion 360, you can see that I've got the resolution set very fine, resulting in a very nice, smooth, flowing organic surface. Now I've got the waves, it's time for some CNC machining. So for the first test, I'm gonna use a piece of scrap, 18 mm Baltic birch plywood. Very nice and easy, basic toolpath for this one. First, a contour operation to cut out the part, then a parallel finish toolpath with a ball nose end mill to do the surfacing. I'm using a 1 8 inch two flute ball nose end mill and I'm using a 0.2 millimeter step over with a full depth of cut. There's no roughing pass on this one, I'm just using a fine enough step over that hopefully it leaves a good surface finish. Also I'm quite pleased with the slow motion on the new camera, 300 frames a second seems to be a big step up from 180 and you can see a lot more of what's going on. The total cut took just under an hour, and there are a few little fuzzy bits left that I can clean up with a sanding sponge, but after literally two or three minutes of sanding, the surface finish is pretty nice. And it's nice to see all the different layers of the plywood coming through with the wave geometry. I realized I could flip the workpiece upside down, and it stays relatively flat and doesn't wobble very much. This means that I can just copy the mesh and move it down a little bit, regenerate the toolpath, and then I can do a two-sided carving, kind of with a constant thickness. So I flipped the part over and clamped it back on the machine, this time using some side clamps so that I've got access to the entire top surface. Again, a bit of very light finishing with a 180 grit sanding sponge, and I think the surface finish looks pretty nice, and the double-sided constant thickness look is quite interesting also. I then gave it a coat of Danish oil to make the grain look nicer, and this is what the first piece looks like. I like how the deep waves reveal the different layers of plywood. I think this sort of thing would look really interesting on a much larger scale. 
So the plywood was interesting, but it was just a first test and I wanted to try other materials too. Here I'm doing a much more detailed model with a 30 degree V-bit on a piece of clear acrylic. The waves on this one are a lot smaller and more detailed, and it's quite interesting to see what it looks like from the backside. The surface finish from the flat V-bit is okay, but because it's got a flat end and not a round end, it does leave these small steps with the step over. So I went back to using the 1 8 inch ballnose end mill on some lower frequency, deeper waves. I flipped these ones over and did the double sided machining on them as well. And the effect is quite cool, the surface finish is definitely very nice. I'm not really sure what I was expecting with these, I think I was expecting them to reflect and refract the light a little bit more interestingly, but they are still quite nice. The main thing I was excited to try was to see what sort of surface finish I could get on these organic flowing shapes on aluminium and brass. So I did a first test in aluminium just using the 3 axis. So this is what the first aluminium test looks like and it is not that good. You can see that I didn't put enough stock to leave in and the finishing pass didn't even get rid of all of the roughing pass in some areas. Also the surface finish kind of sucks, it's all gummy, chewed up and there's a lot of rough patches. I think that this is mostly because of feeds and speeds, I was running the end mill too fast so it wasn't really generating a chip, it was just kind of rubbing on the material and it leaves this rubbish gummy finish. But another thing affecting the surface finish is that Bormo's end mills don't cut very well right at the very tip. Because the tip is so close to the centre of the tool, as it's rotating it doesn't have very much surface speed to actually cut and make a chip and it just ends up rubbing the material. Further away from the centre, on the edge of the ball, you actually have a lot more surface speed and that leads to a lot better surface finish. So I think that simply by rotating the part to a bit of an angle and cutting with the edge instead of the centre of the tool, I should get a lot better surface finish. Since the Carvera is a 4th axis capable machine, I can use the 4th axis to rotate the part to 30 degrees and then do the finishing pass at that angle. If I had a full 5 axis machine, I could make sure that the ball nose is tilted 30 degrees from any of the surfaces that it's cutting on, but unfortunately I've only got 4 axes for now. So the contour toolpath and the adaptive toolpath to clear out all of the material both happen at a normal angle, with the tool perpendicular to the top of the workpiece. Then once those are done, the workpiece rotates to 30 degrees for the finishing pass. You can see with the rotated workpiece how the ball nose end mill is cutting with the edge instead of with the very tip. You don't need the 4th axis for this, you could also just do it if you bolted it down to a fixture at an angle. So the surface finish of the one that was at 30 degrees on the right is quite a lot better than the previous one. This is still using identical feeds and speeds with no coolant as well. Then because I felt like it I did a double sided constant thickness one on the 4th axis. The total machining time for this one was about 2.5 hours. Again this is possible using a 3 axis setup but it's just quite nice that the machine rotates it all for you and you don't even have to touch the part. I improved the feeds and speeds a little bit for this one by lowering the RPM and increasing the feed rate. And you can see the surface finish is definitely the best so far, it's relatively shiny, obviously not mirror shiny and it's not perfect but it's getting there. Probably on the upper end of what I'm going to be able to achieve with a hobby machine like this that doesn't have any proper coolant. After how nice the aluminium one came out I couldn't help but just remake it again in brass. I also wanted to test out the new camera's footage with some brass because it always looks way nicer and the machining results are always nicer as well. Because it's a free cutting material that doesn't need any lubrication, I can already tell that the surface finish is going to be so much nicer. Because I'm in the very fortunate position of having two Carvera CNC machines, I wanted to get them both running at once, so while the first one was running, I then set the other one up to make a slightly smaller version which is more of a keychain or necklace thing. It's always fun when there are multiple machines running at once, making multiple parts, it feels like maximizing productivity. 
and this is what those two brass parts look like. It's very nice and shiny and the surface finish is definitely a lot smoother with a lot less bits where the tool was rubbing. I think this smaller one shows that this sort of idea could be applied to make some kind of jewellery. I mean, this one currently doesn't look very nice, but I think if you cut it out in a nicer shape, you could integrate it into some kind of necklace or earrings quite easily. These super macro shots don't do the surface finish justice. It feels so nice and tactile when you rub it on your hands. These make it look like it's very rough, but it's actually very shiny and smooth. So that concludes the experiments for today's video, and I hope you enjoyed them. Although these maybe aren't directly useful, I do think that I can apply them to other projects to make them look nicer. If you've got any good ideas for projects that this sort of wavy pattern could be applied to, or any ways that you think I can improve the surface finish, then leave them in the comments down below. For example, I could imagine applying this sort of thing to furniture, or a CNC machine laptop case or something. And I had quite a lot of fun while I was making them, and I really enjoyed testing out the new camera. I hope you enjoyed the footage as well. I've got quite a lot of time off over summer before I'm starting a job, so hopefully after a bit of a rest I can start to make some better videos for this channel and do some larger and more ambitious projects. If you're interested in the CNC machine that I was using, there is a link in the description down below. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.